on 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this? Right now on prime time, there are claims nearly a thousand people voted twice during this year's primary elections. How Georgia's secretary of state says he is secure in the election ahead of November. We need answers that make sense. None of this makes sense. The family of a Forsyth County woman who died at a house party say they want answers. Tonight we hear from Tamela Horsford's sister and mother. A COVID-19 survivor using his healing lungs to honor his hero, his father, a veteran of the Great War, World War II. He says his trumpet saved his life. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. On this Tuesday night, first this evening, a man is now in jail, accused of killing his girlfriend and her mother. The case rocking the Dunwoody neighborhood where it happened. Justin Turner is facing double murder charges after police say he shot Crystal Williams and her mother Sunday night. Crystal's brother was also injured but survived. The brother says they were trying to help her leave Turner when he blocked them with his car and started shooting. Police say they are now investigating this as a tragic case of domestic violence. We know domestic violence affects so many people in our community. So tonight, Latasha Givens is sharing some advice from a survivor turned advocate. One in three women have experienced some form of physical violence in her lifetime. Kimya Motley is a domestic violence survivor and the founder of Haven of Light International, an advocacy organization for domestic violence survivors and loved ones. Her ex-husband shot her and her young daughter several years ago. She says it's important to understand the signs that often lead up to domestic violence. It's all about power and control, and they start trying to get it in small, little, insidious ways. She points to three warning signs. First, a partner giving you everything you want, followed by a rush for exclusive commitment. Two, negative comments about your friends and family in an attempt to change your behavior. Third, partners who try to use abuse in your previous relationships against you. The moment you want to leave an abusive situation, Motley says there's one thing you should never do. Never tells the perpetrator that you want to leave. Never give any kind of indication that you want to. You absolutely need a safety plan. And Motley says loved ones who are concerned about an abuse victim should steer them in the direction of a professional who's equipped to handle these types of situations. She says far too often loved ones are hurt or even attacked by the abuser when they try to intervene. 
If you or someone you know is a victim of domestic violence, we have resources on 11alive.com and inside this story on our 11 Alive app. You can find it in the Scene on TV section. A shocking discovery on an abandoned property. Human remains were found in Barrow County. Brittany Kleinpeter spoke to neighbors who want to know what's going on. There was quite a few police cars that showed up maybe about 7 o'clock. I think that we noticed them. You know, something more than what we've seen in the past. And at that time, we were told that there was a, a female um, that had deceased on, on the property. A lot of questions Monday night about the discovery of human remains in Barrow County. The sheriff's office and the GBI are working to identify them. Neighbors say they weren't surprised when they heard the news about the startling find off Wages Road. And the amount of people who come out of that property is ridiculous. You walk the property, you'll see needles and empty beer cans, empty liquor bottles. We have nine cameras throughout the property and, and also motion sensors throughout the property because of you just don't know. Neighbors say the property contains multiple abandoned buildings that attract crime. They think if the buildings were removed, police wouldn't be called to the area as often. They are stripped, they're gutted, the windows are broken. We saw some illegal activity across the street. I personally feel like somebody should either remove the mobile home or burn it down. And maybe since that building won't be there anymore, then it will save us all this crime that we're having around it. Authorities say they do not suspect foul play was involved. Investigators say that this is the second time human remains have been found in the area in the last four years. Back in 2016, a man's skull and bones were found less than a mile away from Tuesday's scene. Turning now to the COVID-19 pandemic, labs certainly have picked up the pace today, releasing nearly 23,000 test results statewide. That's more than double the tests on Labor Day and more than double the number of new positive cases. 1,543 reported across Georgia today. We tracked more of those new cases to Clark County than any other in the metro area. UGA has been in the spotlight ever since students moved back into dorms and returned for class. Today, the Department of Public Health said Clark County had 206 new cases reported to the state. That's compared to 88 new cases in Gwinnett and 75 in Fulton, our most populous counties in the state. As COVID-19 infections continue to be reported on campus across the state, public health experts are calling for more transparency. Caitlin Ross spoke with a researcher, professor and student who say the differences in how schools are reporting numbers make it impossible to know where Georgia stands. The information that was given to us wasn't really detailed enough for, you know, KSU students. So we were kind of going into it kind of blindly. Kennesaw State University junior Crystal Allen says she was worried before classes started because she didn't know how COVID positive cases would be reported. You never know who has it, who needs to be tested. Is there given enough information to be tested? Public health experts and professors echo her concern and have started trying to track the numbers on their own. University of North Georgia Associate Professor of English, Dr. Matthew Bodie, started a petition signed by thousands of professors and students across the university system of Georgia to make reporting cases standard. The university system isn't doing anything at all because they have said publicly they're not tracking each individual school's numbers. Dr. Amber Schmidtke, a public health microbiologist, is also frustrated, saying there's a lack of accountability within the university system of Georgia. When you have an organization as big as the university system of Georgia, um, you would think there would be more standardization within their own umbrella of schools. She created a list of how schools are reporting numbers. She found some are giving daily updates, including if the positive case is a student or professor. Others are giving updates once a week without that context. And some schools just aren't reporting any COVID data at all. These are the schools that, you know, where we send our kids to learn how to graph and how to produce meaningful information. And so it's kind of disappointing to see that they're not doing it. Dr. Schmidtke says she'd like to see daily updates from colleges and universities about who's infected with context, student, professor, staff. She'd also like to know the number of tests administered on campuses each day with the percentage of positive COVID-19 tests. It's a lot of information, but she says it's the best way to keep campuses safe. 
Well, we've had a nice dry pattern from the holiday weekend through today. I'm meteorologist Samantha Moore, one of your 11 Alive storm trackers, and we're expecting to see those moisture levels on the rise. So a beautiful evening out there tonight to get a late evening walk in. Uh, we're in twilight time right now. The sun has set, and of course, it's getting earlier and earlier each night now that we are uh, starting to wrap up summer and we'll be moving into fall fairly soon. So you can see this is the dry air where the blue is. Is, and we have a bit of an easterly wind. Well, coming in on the easterly wind is going to be more humidity, more moisture, and that's also going to bring in some more showers and storms. So we're rain free yet tonight. But as we head into tomorrow, some of this moisture that's along the coast is going to move in on those easterly winds. And so we'll see about a 30% chance for some isolated showers and storms as we head into our Wednesday. So you can expect to see kind of more cloud cover. The rain will be on the increase the next few days. And we're watching a tropical system that's not too far off the coastline. Now, it's not organized yet, but the National Hurricane Center is watching it. And it could become a tropical depression uh, in the next five days are giving it a 40% chance of development in the last next five days, a 30% chance in the next two days. So this is what's closest to home, but we have a lot brewing out there in the Atlantic, and we'll talk about what's happening in the tropics. We have two tropical storms to talk about. More details on that coming up. One fugitive captured, but the search continues for a second man more than 24 hours after a shootout with Georgia deputies. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation tweeting this morning one of two fugitives, Jonathan Hosmer, He's now in custody, but Dalton Potter is still on the run. Look at this guy. According to the GBI, Potter was pulled over for driving a stolen trailer. Investigators say he fired several shots at a deputy. That deputy wasn't seriously hurt. Potter ended up escaping. He's considered to be armed, dangerous, and with a lousy mugshot. If you see him, call 911. We're more than 56 days until the November election. Today's Georgia's Secretary of State said he's investigating 1,000 possible cases of double voting during this year's primaries in June. Here's Joe Hankey. Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger says a voter in Long County openly bragged about voting twice. And while he says hundreds of other voters knew they were voting twice, he did not provide any evidence showing their intentions. Some of those did show up in election results. Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger says the double votes cast in June primary and August runoff elections are from around 100 counties, are still being investigated, but not swing any results. Raffensperger described 150,000 voters requesting an absentee ballot, but then later deciding they wanted to vote in person. The vast majority did not cast their absentee ballot, but... There are 1,000 people of that 150,000 that actually double voted, knowing full well that their vo they had filled out an absentee ballot, had mailed it back in, and then showed up on the day of election. Raffensperger blamed voters for gaming the system. The voters responsible for that, the voters knew what they were doing. Georgia's absentee voting guide states someone can bring their unused absentee ballot and vote in person, or if they mailed in an absentee ballot but the elections office has not received it, you can make a written request to cancel the absentee ballot and then vote in person. When asked how a double vote can be counted despite safeguards in place, Raffensperger mentioned election workers. During uh, the election day, it gets to be very hectic. And as you're juggling many balls and many voters, if you don't go back and back to the system and check it off, then that's how that would actually get through. And so it wasn't recorded, you know, at the at the precinct level. In a follow up question, a reporter asked if that means some or all of the 1000 voters may not have intended to vote twice. Intentionality is not an excuse under the law. Under Georgia law, double voting is a felony with a one to 10 year prison sentence and fines of up to $100,000. Our 11 Alive political team working to bring you perspective and candidates and issues throughout this important election year. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover, email us at whereatlspeaks at 11alive.com. Still ahead in prime time, a Forsyth County mother <coughs> dies at an adult sleepover. Police say it was an accident, but friends and family think there's more to it. Hear from Tim Horsford's mother and sister next. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on our 11 Alive YouTube channel. You can subscribe there and join the conversation in the community section. We've got more 11 Alive news in prime time coming up after the break. Touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on. Authorities have reopened an investigation into the mysterious death of a black mother in North Georgia. Police ruled Tamela Horsford's death at an adult sleepover party in 2018 accidental. But there's renewed interest in the case and celebrities, including rapper 50 Cent, joined more than half a million people calling for justice. And now Horsford's family is speaking out. CNN's Linda Kin uh, Kincaid has the report. With a beaming smile and a sparkle in her eye, Tamla Horsford was a ray of light, according to her family, a mother of five boys who put everyone else first. Super mom, super mom. She made sure she could provide, she could provide for them. She was always the type of person who would like stand up for the little guy, you know? Now her tragic death is seeing renewed cries for justice in the midst of a nationwide movement. It's unfortunate that it has to take other people's heartbreak and other people's loss for, for the proper attention um, to be given to this case involving my sister. In November 2018, Horsford went to a friend's sleepover birthday party at a home in North Georgia. The next morning, the 40-year-old was found in her pajamas unresponsive in the backyard. Until now, her family has not spoken out publicly. Their grief still as raw as the night Horsford died. It's just hard for me to talk about that. The Forsyth County Sheriff's Office ruled her death an accident, concluding she fell from a second-story balcony. An autopsy uncovered a blood alcohol level of 0.23, nearly three times the legal driving limit in Georgia. Traces of Xanax and marijuana were also found. But never, ever, ever, ever have I seen my sister become sloppy drunk and incoherent. And so I doubt that she would pick, you know, a sleepover with people that she was just getting to know to start behaving that way. The attorney for Horsford's family says despite repeated requests, police never provided any autopsy photos. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation says he didn't follow procedure. Ralph Fernandez says that's not true. How unusual is it to request autopsy photos and not be given them. Uh, it's never happened, but it defies logic. And he claims that's not the only issue that defies logic. The placement of the body, multitude of injuries, the, what I would consider to be defensive injuries, the inexplicable uh, post-mortem bleedings. The sheriff's office says it conducted a thorough and comprehensive investigation. But Fernandez believes there's a strong possibility Tamla Horsford's death was a homicide. There were numerous inconsistencies in a series of statements. The disposal of evidence, the relationships between the parties. Across the U.S., the case has sparked a huge petition, with celebrities like Kim Kardashian and 50 Cent also calling attention to the cause. I think people are just tired of seeing, you know, loved ones being taken so sens senselessly. After the public outcry, Georgia authorities reopened the investigation at the request of the sheriff's office. But the family is not satisfied. We, we just want justice. The boys, I just need justice. We need answers that make sense. None of this makes sense. None of it.
The family of a man who died inside the Cobb County Jail begging for help has filed a wrongful death lawsuit. An 11 Alive reveal investigation uncovered video of Kevil Wingo inside the jail repeatedly yelling that he could not breathe. Deputies and medical staff ignored his pleas, eventually placing Wingo in a padded isolation room. It is there all alone he died. That was in September of 2019, a year ago. In June of 2020, four months ago, the sheriff's office concluded its internal affairs investigation, which found no wrongdoing on the part of the staff members. But Wingo's family says his death, it was preventable, and staffers need to be held accountable. You can watch our full investigation and listen to internal affairs interviews with jail staff. It's all under the Reveal uh, section of the 11 Alive app. Just open the app and click on Watch at the bottom of the screen. Well, the sun set before 8 o'clock tonight. The sun is going down earlier and earlier. You may have noticed that. That's a sign that fall is around the corner. It's going to be beginning in two weeks, two weeks from today. And then I was enjoying this shot, and then look at this. Along came a spider that came down beside her. That is a huge spider on the lens here. That's another sign that fall is around the corner. All the spiders are out here. And so uh, we'll definitely be seeing more of those webs around when we get up early in the morning. So observe lows today. We saw those temperatures down at 61 degrees in Carrollton and in Peachtree City in Dalton. 60 in Rome, where the spider was hanging out near the camera. 67 in Atlanta. 72 in Covington. A little milder there this morning, a little warmer. And then during the afternoon, we made it into the mid to upper 80s across most of North Georgia. 86 in Atlanta, 88 in Athens, and 88 in Canton. So, you know, we were pretty close to average. We should be around 85 this time of year and 67 for a low. We were just off by one degree for our high temperature today. Definitely where we should be this time of year and that nice dry air made it feel so much more comfortable than it would otherwise. So we've had the dry air in place. We're seeing that northeasterly flow here. It's becoming a little more easterly at this hour and that's going to drive in some more moisture that's hanging out along the coast here. And boy, along the coast they've had a lot of rain. We saw a beautiful Labor Day weekend, not so much along the coast where they were just seeing constant showers and thunderstorms throughout the day as that easterly flow is keeping them unsettled. And that's where that frontal system is pulled up stationary as well. And we're also watching that easterly flow continue. The National Hurricane Center watching for possible development here. We know we're going to continue to see this easterly flow as we head into the weekend, and that will fuel showers and storms for us. So expect to see a lot or to feel a lot more humidity in the air. Our dew points have been in the 50s the last few days. That's definitely far like, but they're going to go back up in the 70s. That's tropical air, so a lot more humidity and showers and storms on the rise as we head through the end of the week and the weekend. So tonight, nothing to worry about. It's going to be clear, and we'll see those temperatures down in the upper 60s. So tomorrow, starting out around 68, getting up around 87 with plenty of sunshine, but afternoon showers and storms. Isolated in nature, just a 30% chance. So a 7 on your wisometer on that scale of 1 to an 11 with an 11 being a perfect day, a, a 7 with that 30% chance on our Wednesday afternoon and evening. And temperatures once again getting into the mid 80s during the day. So expect the clouds to be on the increase. Rain chances going up in an active pattern starting tomorrow and increasing throughout the weekend. So more cloud cover tomorrow. We'll see that northeasterly flow. Just a few showers. They'll be isolated in nature as we head in through the day. We're not expecting any thunderous downpours yet, but I uh, can't rule out an isolated thunderstorm or two. And then getting into Thursday, yes, those clouds are going to be sticking around, and we'll see more widespread showers and storms, about a 40% chance, and then that goes up to a 50% chance on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and some of these storms could get a little strong, so we'll be monitoring those closely over the course of your weekend, and we have a 40% chance continuing into Monday and Tuesday even of next week. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. 
Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. There were unintended consequences to needed measures to slow the spread of COVID-19. A girl who is hearing impaired relies on lip reading, but she couldn't see what people were saying through cloth masks. So she raised $2,000 for see-through masks for healthcare workers. Tonight, Boyd Hooper with our sister station in Minneapolis introduces us to a young girl on a mission. Right now I'm braiding them. Her hands move quickly, but by now they should. A lot. I have made. Lainey Broad is prolific with bracelets and problem solving. So it has drastically impacted some of our patients. Leah Teagum is Lainey's audiologist at Children's Minnesota, where masks are now mandatory upstairs in the audiology clinic, which presents a problem. So much of our communication is nonverbal, where we rely on facial expressions, and for individuals who have hard of or who are hard of hearing, we rely on lip reading as well. Look something like Laney became aware this. of a solution. So cover up your nose yet you can see your mouth through it, so then you can lip read. Then she put those fast fingers to work. Well she was already making bracelets and we had the thread so we thought let's try to to see if people will buy them and a lot of people bought them. <laughs> all my orders. Braiding alone. Somebody wanted eight rainbows. And with friends. These are all the done bracelets. Lainey has completed and sold roughly 200 bracelets. Thank you for your support to help hearing impaired kids like me communicate. Enough bracelets to buy 270 clear masks. It feels really good. As did this. Delivery day at Children's Minnesota. Would you like to sign your check? For Lainey's donation of $2,056. Pandemic, she's an 11 year old girl and she's finding a way to positively influence people. Awesome. Masks for reading lips. Cool. And sharing smiles. There we go. So Jeff, there are efforts like this that are happening right now in Metro Atlanta as well. These masks are also a challenge for children on the spectrum, many individuals with autism rely on visual cues like a smile or a frown for communication. And this group in Atlanta is a, a nonprofit one, and uh, they have made and donated clear masks for the Marcus Autism Center. And uh, that is uh, such an important thing. Again, we want to give the name of it. It is called SMA Atlanta, or S-M-A-H Atlanta. And they could, I'm sure, use a few dollars uh, if you'd like to, to help them out. Yeah, definitely some worthwhile efforts there. Still ahead, coyotes in Buckhead? Oh, no. Well, yeah, more people are reporting sightings as trapping season gets underway. Times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. 
Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Coyotes causing some problems in metro Atlanta neighborhoods, even attacking pets, Jeff. They are an awful animal and they are awful to get rid of. And they are everywhere in the United States these days and most notably here in Atlanta. Tracy A. McPhear explains why this problem only gets worse this time of year. High pitched uh, squealing and, and uh, howling. So you, you definitely know it when you hear them. And Jamie Barden says you also know when you see them. These coyotes were caught on camera in his Sandy Springs yard near Nancy Creek. Actually hunting, um, he's clearly looking for, for something. Coyote trapper Chip Elliott says these animals will eat just about anything. Insects, fruits, vegetables, live animals, dead animals, um, berries. And September to May is his busiest time of year because litters from spring are old enough to hunt. So you get more sightings of them and you start losing more pets right now. Yvonne Wade says it happened to her neighbor in Buckhead. I heard her across the creek um, crying out one day and I found out it was because she had her cat killed uh, by a coyote and she found it. Elliot says they can't use cages to trap them because the coyotes are too smart. So they dig a hole and bury a chain connected to a foothold trap. Elliot says the footholds are not dangerous for humans or non-target animals. Non-target animals can just be released later without breaking any bones. And for humans, our feet are too large to get trapped in the first place. Elliot says he's trapped more than 20 coyotes in just a few weeks. And unfortunately, they have to euthanize them because they often carry diseases like parvo, rabies, and mange and can't be relocated. He says his goal is to decrease the coyote population while increasing their fear of humans restoring a balance, at least for a while. You can coexist to some degree, but they are a predator and nobody wants their pets or children attacked. 
Well, there are a lot of neighbors uh, in, in town that I've talked to that have had some issues, certainly with coyotes and, and uh, their cats and small dogs being attacked. For tips on ways to protect your pet from these, uh, these coyotes, look for the story on 11alive.com or the 11 Alive app. Be careful with your dogs right now. Well, a major development in the race to produce a vaccine for COVID-19. Some of the world's most well-known drug makers are pledging to not rush out a vaccine without proper testing. NBC's Stephanie Gosk has the details. The race to develop a vaccine for COVID-19 now powered by an unprecedented joint pledge. This morning, the CEOs of nine pharmaceutical companies, including AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer, say they will commit to high ethical standards and sound scientific principles as they work toward developing a vaccine. The statement includes a pledge to always make the safety and well-being of vaccinated individuals our top priority and to only submit a vaccine for approval or emergency authorization after demonstrating safety and efficacy through a phase three clinical study that is designed and conducted to meet requirements of expert regulatory authorities. The hope that this pledge will ensure public confidence in the process and confidence could be faltering. A USA Today poll of voters found two thirds say they won't get a coronavirus vaccine as soon as it comes out. One in four say they don't want to ever get it. While in a controversial move last week, the CDC asked states to prepare for a large-scale distribution of a coronavirus vaccine by November 1st, two days before the election. Part of what the administration has dubbed Operation Warp Speed to make sure a vaccine is approved and reaches as many people as quickly as possible. The president has repeatedly suggested a vaccine could be ready by this fall. This could have taken two or three years, and instead it's going to be... <laughs> It's going to be done in a very short period of time. Could even have it during the month of October. Others have tempered those expectations. Dr. Anthony Fauci predicting approval would come by the end of the year. Is it possible that it could be before then? And the answer is yes. I think it's unlikely, but I think it's possible. Well, there are currently nine phase three trials underway right now, three of them here in the United States. Thousands of people have volunteered, some getting the placebo, others the vaccine. The FDA says for a vaccine to be proven effective, at least 50% of the people who receive it have to be protected. New data from NBC Survey Monkey, the weekly tracking poll, is showing signs that coronavirus fatigue setting in for the nation. Surprise, surprise. According to the data, American adults still view the pandemic as predominantly a health crisis. 52% say it's more of a of a health crisis, while 47% say it's more of an economic crisis. 54% of adults say it's a bigger concern that businesses are reopening too quickly compared to 42% who are more worried about them opening too slowly. Well, you're loving a live storm trackers. Uh, just like you enjoyed a nice fourth day of completely dry conditions, dry air that feels a little more fall-like. So we are clear on the radar, but you don't have to go too far to find some showers and thunderstorms off the coastline. And this has been pretty persistent throughout the last few days. So while our holiday weekend was fantastic, they were dealing with these showers and storms up and down uh, the seaboard from Florida, stretching on up towards Cape Hatteras. And that's because we've had this easterly flow pretty persistent along the coast. And now the National Hurricane Center is watching this area that's off the coastline and pushing some of that moisture in our direction. So uh, we do have a chance of that system developing now, a 40% chance in the next five days of it becoming our next system, a next tropical depression. Now we have two tropical storms here. They were tropical depressions over the weekend, and then yesterday they became tropical storms. We have Paulette. It has 65 mile per hour winds right now, and then Renee, 40 mile per hour winds right now, and it's just w just west of the Cape Cabo Verde Islands. Paulette is still over 1,200 miles away from the Leeward Islands, and it's going to be moving in towards the U.S. in general, but we have some more specifics on that track, and I'll talk about that and its potential impacts coming up in just a few minutes. There is grant money available for people who need help because of the pandemic, but you should be careful what you apply for. Someone's in our Verify team, a social media post claiming FEMA is mailing out checks. Cheryl Mercedes verifies. 
Facebook post claims if you've worked any during the COVID-19 pandemic, FEMA has finally authorized a one-time $2,800 check for hazard pay. It includes FEMA's logo with a link to apply. This one post has been shared over 8,000 times. Cheryl asked the Verify team to look into it. Our source for this is the Federal Emergency Management Agency. FEMA executed the Lost Wages Program in August, providing billions of dollars to states to help with their unemployment claims. The funding allows states to provide at least an extra $300 per week to people who lost their jobs because of COVID-19. But as far as relief money for people who continue to work during the pandemic, FEMA states on its website, no federal assistance was given in the form of hazard pay, nor has FEMA directly paid individuals. So we can verify this claim is false. FEMA has added a coronavirus rumor control section to its website to address these kinds of claims. By the way, it's always a good idea to check with the agency offering the grant opportunity before you fill out any kind of application that asks for your personal information. Well, now a story of how music helped save a man's life from the coronavirus. Dave Navarro says music also helped him honor his father. His dad was a World War II veteran who died while Dave was in the hospital with COVID-19. When Dave was eight, his dad gave him a trumpet. And 60 years later, it has practically never left his side. But things changed after he played with his band in July. His guitar player said he wasn't feeling good, and it turns out it was coronavirus. It spread to the rest of the band and to Navarro's family. Navarro became so sick, doctors put him on a ventilator. He woke up three weeks later, and that's when he learned his father had died from COVID-19. Martin Navarro, a war hero, was 98 years old. Dave Navarro says he willed himself to heal so he would be able to honor his father. I have to go to my dad's funeral and play taps. The first thing he told me was, is I need you to go get my trumpet. A rehab and recovery that should have taken four weeks took Dave seven days. He was released one day before his father's funeral. And that following day, from a wheelchair, horn in hand, Dave's steel healing lungs honored his hero. And that first note came out so strong and clear. I thought, you know what? I'm, I'm going to make it through this. Navarro's daughter says his trumpet and determination to play for his father in tribute helped save his life. Secure your vote. Election Day is coming quickly. The deadline to register to vote is October 5th. Coming up, what you need to do to make sure that your vote is counted. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. 
Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Wildfires continue to grow stronger in California. The Creek Fire in Northern California spans more than 140,000 acres now. Crews have not been able to contain it, leaving about 5,300 homes in danger. The fire has already destroyed at least 65 structures. Dozens of people were trapped in the Sierra National Forest. Army National Guard helicopters have been evacuating people from the area, but a lack of visibility has made it difficult. Seattle police arrested 22 protesters Monday after a group marched to the police union building. According to police, the crowd was blocking traffic as they marched. Police also arrested a number of people they called rioters who refused to leave after throwing rocks, bottles and homemade explosives. Authorities say no officers were hurt. With Labor Day behind us, we are entering the final stretch of the presidential campaign. Yay! President Trump is visiting toss-up states Florida and North Carolina. As Joe Biden still leading in polls and in ad spending, here's NBC's Alice Barr with the very latest from Washington. With exactly eight weeks to go until Election Day, President Trump is hitting the campaign trail hard today, traveling to two battleground states, Florida and North Carolina. And with Joe Biden's campaign now spending more on ads, the president saying he would put his own money into his campaign if needed. We needed to spend more money up front because of the pandemic and the statements being made by Democrats, which were, again, disinformation. In a barrage of tweets today, President Trump slamming Biden and the Democrats, the rivals trading barbs over the president's statements on having a coronavirus vaccine ready before Election Day. Biden saying we need a vaccine as soon as possible, but bulking when asked if he would take one tomorrow if the president announced it. Well, on full transparency on the vaccine, one of the problems is the way he's playing with politics. He said so many things that aren't true. President Trump, often criticized for ignoring the advice of his own medical officials, now accusing Biden and running mate Kamala Harris of undermining science. Should immediately apologize for the reckless anti-vaccine rhetoric. Today, nine major pharmaceutical companies promising to keep politics out of their approval process. We will only submit for authorization when we have evidence of safety and efficacy. The CEO of Pfizer says we could have answers before Election Day, but experts caution it could still take months to deliver the vaccine to hundreds of millions of Americans. Early voting began today for the special election to fill the remainder of the late Congressman John Lewis's term. Election Day, September 29th, and this is for voters in Georgia's 5th Congressional District. There's seven candidates, and you can learn more on 11alive.com. Our 11 Alive political team working to bring you perspective and candidates and issues throughout the important election year. And uh, we see Jennifer Bellamy up on the right underneath the economy next to Joe Hankey. And the two elderly gentlemen up top, Mr. Richards and I. And if you'd like to ask a question of any kind of what you would like to see covered, you can email us at where ATL speaks at 11alive.com. I think we should get rid of that term elderly. I think it's time to throw it out. I don't like it. I don't like the sound of it. It's discriminatory. Uh, we're talking about some changes in the weather as we head into our Wednesday. Very dry uh, pattern that we've had over the weekend. It's going to be changing as humidity starts to work its way in here from the east. And we've had a lot of showers and storms 
up the coastline here with some heavier downpours at the beaches. For all of our friends who are at the beaches, uh, their weather was not as fine as our weather was here over the course of the weekend. So we're going to see some of that moisture moving on in here. And in fact, this could even develop into something tropical. In fact, that's what the National Hurricane Center is watching here right off the Carolina, Carolina coast and giving it uh, a 30 to 40 percent chance of development. Elsewhere, we have a couple of tropical storms here, Paulette and we have Renee. Uh, they're in the middle of the Atlantic and they're moving in, the nor uh, in a northwesterly direction direction. Uh, one of them will likely become a hurricane. You can't really tell by looking at them which one it will be. And it's an active conveyor belt of easterly waves coming off of the west coast of Africa here. So it's a very busy pattern. So taking a look at the spaghetti models of the two tropical storms here, they're generally moving in the west-northwest and then both taking a more northerly curve. We do believe Renee will probably end up being a fish storm, not impacting land. But Paulette is still making making tracks in the general direction of the East Coast, but likely to make that turn to the north. So right now is a little too early to tell whether it will have any impacts on the U.S. as of yet. So there comes Paulette. Has winds at 65 miles per hour now, so it has strengthened. We don't expect it to strengthen any more than that, however, and we expect it to stay at tropical storm strength. So we're not expecting a hurricane out of Paulette, but it will come close, so we'll continue to keep our eyes on it. And then Renee here, that's out in the eastern Atlantic, it's also expected to take that northerly curve. So we think that has even has a better chance of staying out over open waters. Our potential tropical system that the National Hurricane Center centers are watching are uh, this disturbance that's off the Carolina coast, 30-40% chance of development the next five days. So over the course of this next weekend, we could have a tropical depression on our hands, but whether it becomes a depression or not, it will keep things active along the coast and it'll bring in some showers and storms around here as well as we head in through the weekend. And then we have another system that's coming off the coast of Africa. Those waves are lined up as they move into the eastern Atlantic. It has an 80% chance of developing as we head into the next five days. That is of the 8 o'clock advisory coming from the National Hurricane Center. And speaking of tropical moisture, we're going to feel it as we head into the end of the week and the weekend. We've been so nice and dry and we're going to see those moisture levels on the rise. That will few more showers and storms for us. So our rain chances are going to be going up. We'll see more cloud cover and a pretty active pattern as we head into this coming week. So clouds around as we head into tomorrow. We'll see a few showers and storms throughout the afternoon and evening. And then on Thursday, I think we'll see even more expansive cloud cover and some more showers and storms than we will see tomorrow. So a 30% chance tomorrow, 40% chance on our Thursday, and a 50% chance Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So it looks like a pretty active pattern as we head into this coming weekend as well as into the beginning of next week. And we'll be right back after this break. The 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On More jobs heading to the Peach State. Fortune 500 company General Mills expanding cinnamon toast crunch production at its plant in Covington. That's a really good yum, cereal yum, there. Yum, yum, yum. That is a good one. Governor Brian Kemp made the announcement today saying the expansion <laughs> will help Georgia's workforce remain strong. Right now, roughly 400 people work at the Covington plant. The expansion will create 40 additional jobs. For the past 30 years, several varieties of cereal and snack products have been produced at that plant in Newton County. Cinnamon Crunch, man, that sounds good right now, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Some almond milk, let's do it. Labor Day weekend getaways proving to be a boost to air travel, but even with more people taking to the skies, the coronavirus pandemic still left its mark on the summer travel season. From Memorial Day through Labor Day weekend, the TSA screened 65 million people. That's down nearly 76% from a year ago. However, nearly 1 million people were screened last Friday, the highest number since mid-March. Close to 3.3 million passengers passed through TSA checkpoints over the Labor Day weekend. Still, that's down 60% from the holiday weekend in 2019. Next, a new wave of lawsuits filed against two Georgia businesses accused of causing people living nearby to get cancer. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised news. Georgia Tech kicks off the 2020 season Saturday at Florida State. Tech picked to finish last in the ACC. They are expected to be in the basement, perhaps sampling the wine cellar. That's the upside to this. So not a lot of expectation for this Yellow Jackets team, but hey, that's why they play them. We got better and better throughout the entire season last year and six, six practices through spring ball. And then all this time we've had with OTAs uh, and an expanded training camp uh, just excited to see them go out and play but the biggest thing is a team that plays together plays really really hard uh, fights for each other and uh, plays at a really high level that's the expectation every day all right there you go that's some positive talk some schools will have to wait a little bit longer to get started UGA still has a couple of weeks to go the dogs don't open the 2020 season until September 26th against Arkansas pig suey razorback Arkansas, and they are going to need to get it going. We were ready to play August 31st, so, um, you know, we're going to keep practicing getting better. Uh, but, you know, when September 26th comes, you know, best believe Joe's going to be ready to play some football. Japan's Minister of the Olympics says the rescheduled games must be held at any cost. Organizers are looking at more than 200 proposals on how best to deal with the virus, including easing travel restrictions for foreign athletes, antivirus measures at the athlete's village, and how to handle spectators. I got to tell you, I love the Kentucky Derby. I watched it over the weekend, hated it. Without fans, miserable. The Olympics would probably look like that too, right? I don't know. We'll find out. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully there'll be better news in 2021. Braves in action right now against the Marlins. We'll have some highlights coming up in about an hour. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Right now at 9, allegations of Georgia voters double dipping at the ballot box. How it happened and what the state is doing to keep it from happening in November. The world uh, is looking to science right now, in particular to vaccine, to make sure that we will... Uh, bring us to the end of this pandemic. The push to find a COVID-19 vaccine quickly raising concerns. The unprecedented move drug makers are taking to restore confidence in the process. There was a new wave of lawsuits against two medical sterilization plants in Metro Atlanta filed on behalf of residents who live nearby. The lawsuits allege the facilities have released a toxic gas that is directly linked to high cancer rates in neighboring communities. Reveal investigator Andy Parati explains. The attorneys say they represent nearly 200 people who lived or worked near the plants. Many of the attorneys and their clients still live within miles of the facility. Michael Joffroy is one of them. They're killing us. They are killing our community. Joffroy joined five other attorneys in a virtual press conference Tuesday announcing new litigation against two companies which use a cancer-causing gas to sterilize medical equipment, BD in Covington and Sterigenics near Smyrna. The lawsuits claim the company's use of ethylene oxide has contributed to a rise in cancer diagnoses in nearby communities. Kill Connolly is another attorney representing residents. And each of these persons have been, have been diagnosed with either lymphoma, leukemia, or breast cancer. And all of them were in otherwise good health and without significant genetic or other health conditions other than exposure to ETO prior to their cancer diagnosis. That includes Lisa Miller, a pediatrician who lives three and a half miles from the BD plant. She's currently battling breast cancer. Attorney Darren Penn represents her. The exposure that these uh, folks in Covington, uh, especially within a close proximity of, of the facility, uh, are, are undoubtedly experiencing, then 
I think it's it's a very good connection. In 2018, the Environmental Protection Agency identified 109 areas in the U.S. showing potentially elevated cancer risk. Most of the risk driven by ethylene oxide. That includes communities near the BD and Sterigenics plants. Last year, BD spokesperson Troy Kirkpatrick provided 11 Alive a tour of its facility. Simply put, we wouldn't operate a facility that we thought put anyone at risk. Residents' attorneys didn't offer any specific evidence linking the gas to their client's cancer, but they say it will be revealed in the near future. If we wouldn't, didn't believe that and believe in our ability to do that with confident testimony and evidence, I wouldn't be talking to you today. BD and Sterigenics did not respond to our on-camera interview request, but BD did send us an email essentially saying that the ethylene oxide levels outside its plant is on par or lower than many other parts in the state, including a state park three hours away. We have reported extensively on this issue. You'll find more about both the impact of ethylene oxide and the Georgia plants that use the chemical on our website, 11alive.com. Well, a shocking discovery on an abandoned property. Human remains were found in Barrow County. Brittany Klein, Peter, talked to neighbors who want answers tonight. There was quite a few police cars that showed up maybe about 7 o'clock. I think that we noticed them. You know, something more than what we've seen in the past. And at that time, we were told that there was a, a female um, that had deceased on, on the property. A lot of questions Monday night about the discovery of human remains in Barrow County. The sheriff's office and the GBI are working to identify them. Neighbors say they weren't surprised when they heard the news about the startling find off Wages Road. And the amount of people who come out of that property is ridiculous. You walk the property, you'll see needles and empty beer cans, empty liquor bottles. We have nine cameras throughout the property and, and also motion sensors throughout the property because of you just don't know. Neighbors say the property contains multiple abandoned buildings that attract crime. They think if the buildings were removed, police wouldn't be called to the area as often. We saw some illegal activity across the street. I personally feel like somebody should either remove the mobile home or burn it down. Then it will save us all this crime that we're having around it. Authorities say they do not suspect foul play was involved. Investigators say that this is the second time human remains have been found in the area in the last four years. Back in 2016, a man's skull and bones were found less than a mile away from Tuesday's scene. Early voting now underway in Georgia's 5th Congressional District in the special election to fill the remainder of the late Congressman John Lewis's term. There are seven candidates on the ballot. Election day is September 29th. Meanwhile, an investigation is underway into possible cases of double voting during the primaries earlier this year. Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger says his office is looking into claims a thousand people voted twice. Joe Henke explains. Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger says 1,000 double votes his office is investigating were spread across 100 Georgia counties, but do not swing any races. A double voter knows exactly what they are doing, diluting the votes of each and every voter that follows the law. Georgia's Secretary of State today said the double votes were cast in this summer's primary and runoff elections. Raffensperger says one voter bragged about voting twice, but did not describe how his office knows the other voters may have intentionally cast a ballot twice. The state absentee voting guide explains how voters can turn in their unused absentee ballot and vote in person, or if they mailed in an absentee ballot but the elections office has not received it, you may cancel the absentee ballot by making a written request to have the ballot marked canceled. The voter can then vote in person. Raffensperger says 150,000 voters requested an absentee ballot, but later decided to instead vote in person, meaning a fraction cast both. The 1,000 people knew what they were doing. There's no excuse under the law for double voting. Raffensperger says despite safeguards, if an election worker fails to follow through and cancel an absentee ballot when someone votes in person, a double vote could be recorded. He says his office is now working with counties to stop future double votes, but the state Democratic Party is pushing back, saying voter fraud continues to be extremely rare in Georgia, and any implication otherwise undermines our elections. It is clear that rather than do his job of promoting the safety and security of our voting process, the Secretary of State is instead pushing the GOP's voting conspiracy theories and disinformation. 
And while Raffensperger says his office is still investigating, he said the cases will be handed over at some point to the state attorney general's office for any prosecution. Perspective and analysis. That's what our 11 Alive political team is working to bring you as we race toward the November election. If there is a topic you would like for us to cover, send us an email where ATL speaks at 11alive.com. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, talking with more than 400 people right now on Facebook Live, and uh, we are just talking about the changes that are moving our way over the next few days. We were spoiled this weekend with beautiful weather for a long holiday weekend. It timed out perfectly, but now that we're going through the week, you know that nice weather isn't going to last forever. We're eventually going to see some changes coming in, and we're going to start seeing those changes tomorrow. Take a look at the radar screen, and you can see what we're watching. Nothing going on rain-wise here in our area, but as you widen out a little bit. You can see some of this moisture that's building along the North Carolina coast, South Carolina coast, Georgia coast, and Florida coast. This is not a tropical system. There is a potential tropical system way out here in the Atlantic, not too far off from the North Carolina coastline, but that easterly flow is sending some moisture in. We have an easterly flow coming into our area that's going to tap into some of this moisture, and that's going to do a couple things for us. Tomorrow, it's going to increase our cloud cover, give us a few showers late tomorrow, but then our rain chances are going to be going up as we go to the end of the week and even into the weekend too. So let me show you what we're watching out there. Uh, this is our emoji muggy cast. We were just talking about this um, on Facebook Live just a second ago. I want you to pay attention to the emojis here where you see the smiley face, which is what we have tonight at 11. That's showing dry air over our area. A lot of people smiling out there tonight because it doesn't feel that muggy. But then going through the day tomorrow, look at the increase in moisture. See this? That corresponds with getting more humid, getting a little more muggy out there. And then look what happens into Thursday, still kind of humid. And then into Friday, the sad face indicating very humid conditions. And with that increase in moisture going into Friday and then also on Saturday, still the sad face here, we're going to see not only the humidity around, but also uh, higher chances for some rain coming in as we go into the weekend. Stay with us. We'll time that out for you as well as show you what's going on in the very busy tropics. What is a story that we have tragically had to share so many times as police investigate what they're calling a deadly case of domestic violence? This time, a young woman and her mother killed after Dunwoody police say the boyfriend Justin Turner opened fire on them Sunday night as Crystal Williams tried to leave him tonight. Latasha Gibbons is talking to a survivor in another case who's become an advocate for victims trying to escape. Tragically, there are so many people right here in Metro Atlanta who are dealing with domestic violence, and those numbers have increased during the pandemic. Today, I talked to a woman who is a survivor turned advocate after her husband shot her and her daughter multiple times. Domestic violence is, or intimate partner violence is all about power and control, and they start trying to get it in small, little, insidious ways. Kimya Motley of Safe Haven International says look out for things like, first, a partner who rushes to offer to do everything for you, then demand an exclusive commitment. Second, makes negative comments about your friends and family in an attempt to change your behavior. Molly also says before trying to escape an abuser, never tells the perpetrator that you want to leave, never give any kind of indication that you want to. You absolutely need a safety plan. And Motley says loved ones who are concerned about an abuse victim should steer them in the direction of a professional who's equipped to handle these types of situations. She says far too often loved ones are hurt or even attacked by the abuser when they try to intervene. There have been more reports of domestic violence during the pandemic. Abusers and their targets have been forced to quarantine together for weeks. In early May, Atlanta's police department reported a 13% decrease in violent crimes, but a 42% increase in aggravated assault calls related to domestic violence. Investigators found 80% of those calls came from private residences and more than half involve current or former romantic partners. APD also found just 2% of complaints came from repeat domestic violence locations, a sign that COVID fed frustration is playing a role. If you or someone you know needs help, contact the National Domestic Violence Hotline. That number 1-800-799-7233. It is free and available 24 hours a day. Or if you don't feel safe making a call and talking, go to the hotline.org. Coming up tonight, tracking COVID cases on campus. Is there an easier way to do it? 
Many in the UGA community say it's time. A reminder, Primetime is streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. You can subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. More 11 Alive News in Primetime after the break. Here. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. The number of people with COVID-19 needing hospital care in Georgia continues to go down. Today, about 1,600 active patients were reported, 51 of them new since Labor Day. The state also reported hospitals are using 961 ventilators. That number includes all patients, not just those on co with COVID. But it is the first time we've dipped below 1,000 in nearly two months. Still, Health and Human Services says Georgia has a higher percentage of hospital beds being used to treat COVID than any other state. Information guides decisions. There are calls for the University System of Georgia to be more transparent in its reporting COVID cases on campuses. From professors to students, people are asking for a standardized reporting tool to make it easier to see where schools really stand. Caitlin Ross has more. It's a huge task trying to figure out how many people have been tested on each campus in the University System of Georgia and then figure out a way to tell people about it. The university system has no standard reporting mechanism for COVID-19 cases, and public health experts worry that makes the data confusing and difficult to interpret. Dr. Amber Schmidtke set out to track which schools are reporting which data and found there are some universities giving daily updates about the virus. Others provide weekly positive case numbers, and some just aren't reporting anything at all. And there's no way to get that information. You know, it's like we have a black box. We don't exactly know what's going on on campus, and the only way we can really see what's happening is by looking at what's happening with COVID cases in the community. University of North Georgia professor Dr. Matthew Bode has filed public records requests trying to get positive case numbers out of some schools like Georgia State University and says even then he couldn't get their positive case numbers. There isn't a one place to go in Georgia to track these numbers, um, especially statewide. And so I think people are concerned about their own school and their own community, but they're also interested in comparing it to other places. He thinks the University System of Georgia should go completely virtual until there's a uniform way to report all of those numbers. USG has told each college and university it's up to them how they report it. COVID-19 and the response to it is a really big part of the conversation leading up to the election. The timing and safety of a vaccine is now part of the political debate. We're going to have a vaccine very soon, maybe even before a very special date. You know what date I'm talking about. One of the problems is the way he's playing with policy. I'm worried if we do have a really good vaccine, people are going to be reluctant to take it. There are questions about the safety of a vaccine if it's rushed through the process, even if it's approved by the government now in an unusual step. Nine drug makers have come together to pledge they won't rush the process. These companies, some of the largest in the world, have promised not to move forward until they can prove their vaccine safety and effectiveness. A pledge that comes as many Americans say they may not even get a vaccine once it's available. Jennifer Bellamy has more. 
Chasing after a coronavirus vaccine, CEOs from nine of the largest drug makers in the United States and Europe pledging to follow science. The group includes big names like Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson and Moderna. The nine companies say they're united in their commitment to upholding the integrity of the scientific process as they work towards possible vaccines and FDA approval. In this pledge, all the companies are saying that we will only submit for authorization when we have evidence of safety and efficacy that are coming from a well-designed phase three study. But there's doubt to deal with. An NBC News survey monkey poll found 40% of adults say they will get a government approved vaccine for COVID-19. 24% say they wouldn't, while 34% said they weren't sure. The CEOs hope the pledge will help restore public confidence in the process and its potential results. We saw it as uh, critical to come out and reiterate our commitment mm -hmm. that uh, we will develop our products, our vaccines, using the highest ethical standards and uh, the most scientific uh, rigor processes. Pfizer CEO says the company predicts it will know if its vaccine is viable by the end of next month. But to be clear, that doesn't mean a vaccine will be ready for the mass public at that point. Meanwhile, the Food and Drug Administration has said that any vaccine must prove it is at least 50% effective to receive approval. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Live Storm Trackers. We still have right at 200 people on Facebook Live right now. They're getting ready to watch the behind the scenes look at this weather. So if you want to go to my Facebook page, Chris Holcomb 11 Alive, tune into this Facebook Live. You'll be able to see what it looks like kind of behind the scenes while I'm doing the weather. Meanwhile, let me show you what we're watching. Dry weather conditions. A lot of people on Facebook Live have been saying they love the weather. They don't want the rain to come back. Others are saying, hey, we need some rains. It's been dry this weekend. Well, we are going to get some, and that's all thanks to this easterly flow we have here. Moisture building in off of the Atlantic. Some of that coming into North Carolina, South Carolina. They're along the Georgia coast, and thanks to that flow, it's going to tap into some of that moisture. Increase our clouds tomorrow. Low rain chance tomorrow afternoon. The humidity levels start coming up, and then the rain chances are going to go up for the end of the week and also into the weekend. Let me show you what we're watching out there right now. This is a look at that dew point, um, and it's kind of what I was showing you just a minute ago with the emoji cast, where you can see the moisture content in the air is coming up. Now look at today, and really this weekend, we had those dew points that were in the 50s and lower 60s, which is really comfortable air. I'm sure you felt that. felt really nice out there. Well, tomorrow, dew points start coming up. That means the humidity Humidity levels will start rising a little bit more, and that's going to continue to go on up, especially get up into the oppressive range with temperature with dew points in the 70s for the weekend and into Monday. And that's when those rain chances are going to be higher too. Temperatures out there are pretty comfortable. We're in the 70s right now here in Atlanta. 79. Look at Carrollton showing off. They just went down to 69 degrees. Blairsville 69, Clayton 68. We have lower 70s in Athens, feeling really nice. Covington, go outside and just breathe in some of that co nice cooler air. 70 in Peachtree City. Now, I know 70 is not you know, cold, but at 9 o'clock at night compared to what we've been dealing with, it feels pretty good out there. Tomorrow, we're up to 87. Today's high was 86, so just one degree warmer tomorrow. We're going to go with a 7 on the wasometer. That's our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. And we will see clouds increasing about a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain tomorrow afternoon. Here's the forecast track. There's that easterly flow. You see that northeasterly flow? And we start seeing some of those clouds that will build in during the day tomorrow and then a few more clouds at lunchtime and into the afternoon. And here you see a little bit of green showing up. That's that 20 to 30 percent chance you'll get hit by a shower. Not everybody's going to get wet tomorrow. Just a few of those showers around a couple of them into the evening hours. And then on Thursday, starting off with mostly cloudy skies. Once we get into the afternoon hours, we'll see a few more of those showers popping up. We'll go with about a 30 to 40 percent chance for showers on Thursday and then up to 50 percent for uh, Friday, Saturday and also on Sunday. So more moisture coming in. Now we have a potential tropical system that is just off the coast of North Carolina that has a 30 to 40 percent chance of development. Whether or not this becomes a tropical depression or becomes a named storm, it's still going to send moisture uh, over into the Carolinas and some of that will spill into our area. There's another system we're watching coming off the uh, coast of Africa that has a higher chance of development, a 20 to 80 percent chance of development over the next five days. We also have Renee and Paulette out there as well. Let, let's focus on this one off the coast of North Carolina. Here are the spaghetti models showing this coming in Thursday near the Carolina coastline. A couple of outliers show it coming in closer to Georgia. And then uh, there's also Paulette, which is a tropical storm, 65 mile an hour winds. We we think this is going to start curving. Most likely the extended model show this curving away. And then we also have Renee out in the Atlantic as a tropical storm. 
most likely will become a hurricane on Thursday, and then the models show that curving away as well. So no major threats or impacts we think from Paulette or from Renee. So here's the forecast. Let me show you what we're watching here as we go through the day. Those rain chances starting to come back up, as you can see, to 30% on a Wednesday, and then a 40% chance for showers Thursday, and then those higher rain chances at 50% on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then back down to 40% Monday and Tuesdays with temperatures, those highs each day pretty much there in the 80s. Well, coyotes are causing problems all across Metro Atlanta. Neighbors say some coyotes are even attacking their pets. Check out these photos we got caught on home security camera. This one coming out of Sandy Springs. The neighborhood hired a coyote trapper. He says this time of year is especially busy since litters born in the spring are now old enough to hunt. When you start seeing them, that's when there's a danger because they're losing that fear of us. And when they lose that fear, then they just don't care anymore. And they, they will attack right in front of you. If you take your pets out at night, make sure they're on a leash to keep coyotes off your property. Secure your trash, remove dog and cat food bowls from the backyard, and also take down your bird feeders. Good tips there. Still to come tonight here in the 9 o'clock hour, Harry and Megan moved to California, and they sure got a big boost from Netflix. How the extra cash came in handy. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1105 News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty. After making a blockbuster Netflix deal, Britain's Prince Harry and his wife Meghan have repaid a debt to British taxpayers. The nearly $3 million debt was a real sore point in the UK. The couple used the public money to turn a cottage on the Queen's Windsor estate into their family home. Then they moved to California. NBC's Chapman Bell reports tonight from London. It was a decision that sent shockwaves through the palace. Harry and Meghan deciding to give up their positions as senior working royals and move to America, becoming financially independent. Criticism remained about the approximately $3 million taken from public funds the couple used for renovations on their UK home. Now, after a Netflix deal secured by the couple said to be worth tens of millions, that money has now been returned. A spokesperson for the Duke and Duchess saying, 
a contribution has been made to the sovereign grant by the Duke of Sussex that fully covered the necessary renovation costs of Frogmore Cottage, adding, it will remain the UK residence of the Duke and his family. Well, even though the couple now base themselves in California, it hasn't stopped them from being front page news over here, particularly on the tabloids. This one today saying Netflix Harry repays cottage and net fixed, Harry and Meg repay cottage bill with TV cash. It's understood the couple now hope to move forward with their private lives, their public projects, as well as their family life and their independence now that this is behind them. Secure your vote. Election day is coming quick. The deadline to register to vote is October 5th. Coming up, what you need to do to make sure your vote is counted. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. With Labor Day behind us, we are entering the final stretch of the presidential campaign. President Trump is visiting toss-up states, Florida and North Carolina today, as Joe Biden still leads in the polls and in ad spending. Alice Barr is in Washington with the latest. With exactly eight weeks to go until Election Day, President Trump is hitting the campaign trail hard today, traveling to two battleground states, Florida and North Carolina. And with Joe Biden's campaign now spending more on ads, the president saying he would put his own money into his campaign if needed. We needed to spend more money up front because of the pandemic and the 
statements being made by Democrats, which were, again, disinformation. In a barrage of tweets today, President Trump slamming Biden and the Democrats, the rivals trading barbs over the president's statements on having a coronavirus vaccine ready before Election Day. Biden saying we need a vaccine as soon as possible, but bulking when asked if he would take one tomorrow if the president announced it. Well, I'm full transparency on the vaccine. One of the problems is the way he's playing with policy said so many things that aren't true. President Trump, often criticized for ignoring the advice of his own medical officials, now accusing Biden and running mate Kamala Harris of undermining science. Should immediately apologize for the reckless anti-vaccine rhetoric. Today, nine major pharmaceutical companies promising to keep politics out of their approval process. We will only submit for authorization when we have evidence of safety and efficacy. The CEO of Pfizer says we could have answers before Election Day, but experts caution it could still take months to deliver the vaccine to hundreds of millions of Americans. And Labor Day does usually mark the home stretch in the race for the White House. 57 days until the general election, just to count for you. And in case you didn't realize it, you have less than a month to register. Hope for breaks down all the ways you can be sure your vote is counted. In Georgia, you can register three ways, online, in person, or by mail. You cannot, I repeat, cannot register to vote and cast your ballot on the same day. And you will need a photo ID to vote. If you're voting by mail, you have until October 30th to register. Just think of it as the day before Halloween. You can vote by mail without an excuse, and you can vote by mail without a notary or witness. Now, to make sure the vote counts, it must be postmarked by Tuesday, November 3rd and received by Friday, November 6th. If you're casting an absentee ballot, it's recommended to request it immediately and mail it in without delay. And for all ballots, follow the directions. If it says use blue or black ink, use blue or black ink. And in Georgia, an absentee ballot return envelope will have an oath you need to sign. The signature on the oath will be compared with the signature used on the absentee ballot application. So keep your signature the same. And finally, if you're voting in person, you have three weeks from October 12th to October 30th. And the number one thing you want to remember, double check everything, double check addresses, your polling location, and also the status of your voting. In Georgia, you can do that online. We have all of this information posted for you. Just head to 11alive.com. Our entire 11 Alive political team is working to bring you perspective on the candidates and issues throughout this important election year. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover, email us. We're ATO Speaks at 11alive.com. Another grim COVID milestone. The number of cases in children has surpassed half a million. The Academy of Pediatrics says more than 70,000 new cases were reported in children from August 20th through September 3rd, with a total of more than 500,000 child cases. Children make up nearly 10% of the all COVID-19 cases in the U.S. Well, police are looking for the Lawrenceville man they say stole nearly $5,000 worth of sunglasses. This happened back in early August. Police say the suspect you see right here on surveillance video got into the closed sunglass hut store in Sugarloaf Mills Mall and took 25 pair of sunglasses. Anyone with information is urged to contact Gwinnett County Police if you know who that is. Well, we've been enjoying the dry weather the past few days and not only just not rain, but also low humidity. And tonight it feels really nice out there again with that lower humidity and some pretty comfortable temperatures. And that's indicated here by the blue color. This is our moisture map and the bluish color shows the very dry air. And then you see all this moisture that is building out here off of the Atlantic coastline where the oranges and reds are located. Well, let me show you what's happening. We're going to see an easterly flow and that's going to start increasing that moisture tomorrow. We're going to notice that with an increase in our cloud cover. We're going to see a low rain chance tomorrow afternoon and those humidity levels are going to start to rise. And then as we go into Thursday, about the same thing, more humid, a little better rain chance. And then here you see on Friday and then also into Saturday, the orange is coming in here. We're not only going to have just humid air around, but also a better chance for showers because there will be so much moisture content in the air. And a lot of that is going to be feeding in off of the Atlantic uh, where we're going to see those, uh, those those higher humidity levels. And then even into Monday, 
uh, we're going to see some higher rain chances here as well. So just be prepared for that as we go through the next few days. So here's a look at the weather headlines. As we just showed you, the moisture is returning. We're going to see the higher rain chances moving our way over the next few days. It's going to be a gradual buildup in those rain chances. Also, the tropics are very active. We'll take another look at that of what's happening in the Atlantic Basin. And if we have any threats here on the Atlantic coastline, more on that in just a few minutes. Authorities have reopened an investigation into the mysterious death of a black mother in North Georgia. Police ruled Tamela Horsford's death at an adult sleepover party back in 2018 accidental. But there is renewed interest in the case and celebrities, including rapper 50 Cent, join more than a half million people calling for justice. And now Horsford's family is speaking out. Linda Kincaid reports. With a beaming smile and a sparkle in her eye, Tamla Horsford was a ray of light, according to her family, a mother of five boys who put everyone else first. Super mom, super mom. She made sure she could provide, she could provide for them. She was always the type of person who would like stand up for the little guy, you know? Now her tragic death is seeing renewed cries for justice in the midst of a nationwide movement. It's unfortunate that it has to take other people's heartbreak and other people's loss for, for the proper attention um, to be given to this case involving my sister. In November 2018, Horsford went to a friend's sleepover birthday party at a home in North Georgia. The next morning, the 40-year-old was found in her pajamas unresponsive in the backyard. Until now, her family has not spoken out publicly. Their grief still as raw as the night Horsford died. It's just hard for me to talk about that. The Forsyth County Sheriff's Office ruled her death an accident, concluding she fell from a second story balcony. An autopsy uncovered a blood alcohol level of 0.23, nearly three times the legal driving limit in Georgia. Traces of Xanax and marijuana were also found. But never, ever, ever, ever have I seen my sister become sloppy drunk and incoherent. And so I doubt that she would pick, you know, a sleepover with people that she was just getting to know to start behaving that way. The attorney for Horsford's family says despite repeated requests, police never provided any autopsy photos. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation says he didn't follow procedure. Ralph Fernandez says that's not true. How unusual is it to request autopsy photos and not be given them? Uh, it's never happened, but it defies logic. And he claims that's not the only issue that defies logic. The placement of the body, multitude of injuries, the what I would consider to be defensive injuries, the inexplicable uh, post-mortem bleedings. The sheriff's office says it conducted a thorough and comprehensive investigation. But Fernandez believes there's a strong possibility Tamla Horsford's death was a homicide. There were numerous inconsistencies in a series of statements. The disposal of evidence, the relationships between the parties. Across the U.S., the case has sparked a huge petition, with celebrities like Kim Kardashian and 50 Cent also calling attention to the cause. I think people are just tired of seeing, you know, loved ones being taken so sens senselessly. After the public outcry, Georgia authorities reopened the investigation at the request of the sheriff's office. But the family is not satisfied. We, we just want justice. Boys, I just need justice. We need answers that make sense. None of this makes sense. None of it. President Trump back on the campaign trail, visiting multiple states today and airing some grievances. The story when we we turn here on prime time. From 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights. For the first time ever, Louisville, Kentucky is set to have a black woman lead the police department. It comes at a time when racial tensions are incredibly high and the community is looking for answers in the death of Breonna Taylor, a young woman killed by police during a botched search warrant. Caitlin Russ reports. I am a leader and I know how to lead. I know this city. I love this city. That leadership both in and out of LMPD is what former Louisville police officer and current Metro Council President David James thinks can heal a fractured police force. I think she will help stabilize things and uh, work with the community, work with the officers. And it's a hard job, but I think she can bring the community in a way that no one else could. Louisville Urban League President Sadiqua Reynolds has known Gentry since she was a young cop and Reynolds was a public defender more than 20 years ago. She would give the shirt off her back. She would arrest someone and then take food to their grandmother. Whatever role she's been in, she's always been willing to do her job and she's never had an easy job. Reynolds says she's looking forward to having someone in the chief seat who won't let the mayor micromanage the department, but says Gentry will need the support of her officers as well as the community. She's a black woman in the middle of a race storm in our city, and she's stepping into a leadership role. You're trying to help make space for people in rooms where you can barely breathe yourself. Reynolds has been encouraging Gentry to take the position for years, saying she should have been chosen back when the former chief Steve Conrad was hired in 2012, calling her a well-seasoned person for this role. She is a mother to black sons. She is a wife to a black man. She knows what it is to be black in this community. She understands what it is to be a police officer in this community. I am proud of her for stepping up. With eight weeks until the election, President Trump is back on the campaign trail after a long Labor Day weekend. President Trump appeared distressed this weekend over the fallout that ensued from the story published in The Atlantic, accusing him of privately disparaging veterans. Trump denies that he made the comments. CNN's Caitlin Collins reports. With Labor Day behind him, President Trump is back on the campaign trail in two states that were critical to his 2016 election, 
Florida and North Carolina. We're going to Florida, we're going to North Carolina, we're doing a double stop. But in between his two stops, the president is still dealing with the fallout from a report in the Atlantic claiming he disparaged Americans killed in war and insulted the service of military members. Who would say a thing like that? Only an animal would say a thing like that. New CNN reporting reveals that Trump was visibly distressed over the fallout from the story this weekend, fearing it could erode his support within the military. Trump's anger was evident as he vented from the front steps of the White House yesterday, where he accused senior military leadership of being beholden to defense contractors. I'm not saying the military is in love with me. The soldiers are. The top people in the Pentagon probably aren't because they want to do nothing but fight wars so that all of those wonderful companies that make the bombs and make the planes and make everything else stay happy. Sources said that comment was sparked by the president's anger that more Pentagon leaders didn't defend him. Chief of Staff Mark Meadows claims Trump wasn't talking about the defense secretary, Mark Esper, who was once the top lobbyist for Raytheon, one of the biggest defense companies in the world. Those comments are not directed specifically at them as much as it is what we all know happens in Washington, D.C. So that comment was more directed about the military industrial complex. Meadows did not mention how Trump has bragged in the past about a massive arms sale to Saudi Arabia. I believe it's the largest order ever made. Trump is on the road today as his campaign is facing a potential cash shortage after spending heavily in the early stages of the race. Trump said today he's considering funding the race with his own money like he did in the 2016 primaries. But if we need it anymore, I'd put it up personally, like I did in the uh, primaries last time. In the 2016 primaries, I put up a lot of money. If I have to, I'll do it here. According to the New York Times, the Trump campaign has spent more than $800 million of the money it has raised since 2019. Big tech stocks fell again today after taking Wall Street to record highs just a week ago. The S&P 500 fell nearly 3% with its first three-day losing streak in nearly three months. Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon stocks fell more than 4%. Oil prices also dropped. September snow. Yes, snow falling near Georgetown, Colorado. Talk about a dramatic shift in temperature. Check this out. Just days after the area reached record tying days of 90 degree heat, they had snow today, Chris. It's been all over social media. So many people talking about this, a drastic swing. Uh, you know, we like it to cool off here, but not, we don't want the snow like that, do we? But could you imagine that, just being outside in your shorts and you know, enjoying the 90 degree heat and then a day or so later dealing with snow there. Well, right now here in the southeast, we're concentrating on the very active tropics uh, that are, are taking place right now. We're nearing the peak of hurricane season and we, we have some moisture here off of the Carolina coastline. This is not the potential tropical system. The potential potential tropical system is right over here. In fact, you can see that with the uh, X that we have in orange as this moves over toward the west in this development zone that is an orange color. It has a 30% chance of developing into a tropical depression or a tropical storm the next two days, a 40% chance over the next five days, but whether or not it develops, it is still going to bring rain in along into South Carolina and North Carolina. And with our easterly flow, we're going to tap into that and we're going to see our rain chances increasing here. There's another potential tropical system that we're watching off the coast of Africa when it moves into this area that's in red. That's a 20 to within an 80% chance of developing over the next five days. And as you know, we still have uh, Renee and Paulette that are out there as well. Here's a look at uh, let's look at the spaghetti models first for the one that's off the Carolina coastline. If it does develop or if it's just an area of low pressure, it's pretty much the consensus is that it would move in around North Carolina early on Thursday, spreading the rain in. a couple of outlying models have it coming in there along the South Carolina, maybe into, even into parts of Georgia. But again, we don't think it's going to be a, bit, a real strong system or anything, just a rainmaker that's going to be pushing in uh, from the Atlantic. Now, let me show you Paulette. Here is a look at the Leeward Islands. Here's Puerto Rico right here. This is in the central Atlantic. Uh, it's winds right now 65 miles an hour. If it got up to 75 mile an hour winds, it would be a hurricane. It looks like it's, it could get up to 70 mile an hour winds and then back to 60, 50, 50 and 60 again. Most likely 
staying as a tropical storm. Here's Bermuda right here. They need to keep an eye on this system, but our extended models kind of show this maybe brushing Bermuda and then curving away. At this point, we're monitoring this system. We don't think it's going to have an impact on the Atlantic coastline, but we'll keep an eye on that. Renee is off the uh, Af coast of Africa, uh, and this one is most likely going to become a hurricane, we think, on Thursday afternoon, and then it's going to curve away and not really impact any land masses here at all. And here's a look at those spaghetti models. Here's Renee, and you can see that curve away. This is why we have to monitor what's happening with Paulette. Some of the models, you know, outliers trying to bring it closer to the Atlantic coastline. The consensus is, though, that this is going to curve away and not really impact us. So we, of course, are going to keep watching that. Now, take a look at the names. I just mentioned we're on Paulette and Renee right now. Oh, you know what? Something that, that people were asking me, um, you know, it's usually male, female, male, female, male, female, or and at some seasons it starts with female and then male, female, male. People have asked me, why do we have three female names in a row? Well, actually, Paulette, of course, is female. Omar was male, then Paulette. Renee, this spelling is more of a male version of Renee. Uh, and then it goes to Sally, and then Teddy, Vicky, and Wilfred. And we're not even halfway through the season, and we only have one, two, three, four names left. What happens if we get to Wilfred and then we have another storm? Then we'll go to the Greek alphabet. Speaking of the peak, uh, September 10th, that's Thursday, is the peak of hurricane season statistically, and then activity starts to go down a little bit. So we're at the very busy time right now, and we have a lot of activity out there to watch. We're going to see a 30% chance for showers on Wednesday, 40% chance Thursday, and then uh, up more to 50 to 60% chance for showers Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. At this point, it doesn't look like it's going to be a washout like raining all weekend, but there will be often on showers with highs in the mid-80s, then back down to a 40% chance on Monday and Tuesday with highs 86 Monday, 83 on Tuesday. Stay with us. We have much more to come on Prime Time. Be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. 
we are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can. Fulton County School District kicked off phase one of reopening classes today. Phase one gives pre-K through second grade the option of in-person learning for 90 minutes once a week and third grade through 12th graders can schedule one on one meetings with their teachers. Meanwhile, the district is debating skipping phase two and jumping straight to phase three, where all students have the option of attending in person classes one full day a week. We're going to see our rain chances coming up. Low risk uh, a Wednesday, 30% chance for a shower. Then it's up to 40% Thursday. Higher rain chances Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then back to 40% Monday and Tuesday. So a wetter, more humid, muggy pattern coming back. So I hope you enjoyed the past few dry days. All right, I will see you on Uplay at 11 on our sister station, 11 Alive. More news and weather coming up next here on the ATO with Jeff Hellinger. Safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers. The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1105 News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. Live News Primetime on the ATL starts now. For the first time, the family of a Forsyth County mother of five who died falling off of a balcony is speaking out nearly two years later. Her family still wonders if her falling off a balcony to party with friends was an accident or perhaps something more nefarious, perhaps homicide. John Chirik is at GBI headquarters in DeKalb County with the very latest in a case that has haunted so many for so long. John, this has been going on a very long time. Nearly two years now, and the GBI just told me that the active in the investigation is continuing. It's active and ongoing. 
Now, Tamla Horsford's mother and sister tell me that they need answers, and they need answers that make sense, and so far, none of this makes sense. What happened at his home in Cumming in November 2018? What caused the death of 40-year-old Tamla Horsford, married, mother of five boys? What caused her death here at an all-night party with friends? Now, nearly two years later, Horsford's sister and mother are aching, they say, still for answers. Did Horsford accidentally lose her balance and fall off of this deck to the yard below? As the initial Forsyth County Sheriff's Office investigation concluded, citing the Xanax and marijuana and alcohol that the autopsy found in her system. Horsford's sister, Summer St. George Jones, speaking publicly for the first time in an interview with CNN. Never, ever, ever, ever have I seen my sister become sloppy drunk and incoherent. And so I doubt that she would pick, you know, a sleepover with people that she was just getting to know to start behaving that way. The family's attorney, Ralph Fernandez, tells CNN he believes the evidence he has seen so far indicates that Horsford was the victim of homicide. The placement of the body, multitude of injuries, the what I would consider to be defensive injuries. Back in February 2019, three months after Horsford died, Forsyth County Sheriff's Major Joe Perkins was confident her death was an accident. All the injuries were all indicative and uh, consistent with a fall. But this past spring, amidst the renewed international focus on racial justice, the GBI agreed to conduct an independent investigation at the request of Forsyth County. We need answers that make sense. None of this makes sense. None of it. It's a family's anguish now, nearly two years later. The GBI is not discussing any sort of timetable as to when it might release findings to Forsyth County, no matter what those findings turn out to be. John Sherrick in DeKalb County outside GBI headquarters. John, thank you. We appreciate the report. All right, on to the pandemic. The number of people with COVID-19 in Georgia needing hospital care continues to fall. Today, about 1,600 active patients were reported, 51 of them since Labor Day. And that is a new total. The state also reported hospitals are using 961 ventilators. That number includes all patients, not just those with COVID. But it is the first time that we have dipped below 1,000 in nearly two months. Still, Health and Human Services says that Georgia has a higher percentage of hospital beds being used to treat COVID than any other state. New information showing that there were 23 COVID outbreaks in Georgia schools last week. That's according to State Department of Public Health, and that brings the total number to nearly 200 outbreaks in schools across the state. Hope Ford joins us live now to break it all down for us. Hope. Yeah, we found schools, prisons and workplaces has the highest number of COVID outbreaks since the pandemic started. But nursing homes and long term care facilities, they still remain the number one setting where COVID outbreaks have occurred in the state. We're getting a better idea on the types of places that have been hit the most with COVID outbreaks. New data shows from August 30th to September 5th, 17 nursing homes reported outbreaks. That's in a seven day period. And in the same time frame, 23 schools reported outbreaks, four prisons and 11 workplaces. But take a closer look at the total numbers. Nursing homes and living care facilities top the list with 686 outbreaks, followed by prisons and jails with 190. Workplaces and schools are almost neck and neck with 184 and 183 outbreaks respectively. It's unclear how many positive cases it takes for the Georgia Department of Health to classify a COVID outbreak. However, the official definition they gave us is, quote, more than the expected number of cases in one place within a 14-day period. COVID isn't the only disease Georgia tracks. DPH also tracks hundreds of other outbreaks, from the flu to foodborne illnesses. So far, Georgia has had more COVID outbreak in investigations than all of 2018 outbreaks combined. And manufacturing facilities, daycares and churches also remain pretty high on the list of total COVID outbreaks this year. The places with the least amount of outbreaks, swimming pools, private homes and dialysis centers. All right, Hope, thank you. The number of child COVID cases has reached a milestone, surpassing a half a million now. The Academy of Pediatrics says more than 70,000 new child coronavirus cases were reported from August 20th to September 3rd, with a total of 513,000 cases in children, making up nearly 10% of all coronavirus cases. The family of a man who died in the Cobb County Jail begging for help has now filed a wrongful death lawsuit. 
An 11 Alive reveal investigation uncovered video of Kevil Wingo inside the jail repeatedly yelling that he could not breathe. Deputies and medical staff ignored his pleas. Eventually, they put Mr. Wingo in a padded isolation room. It is there he died alone, and that was in September of 2019. In June of this year, the sheriff's office concluded its internal affairs investigation, which found no wrongdoing on the part of staff members. But Wingo's family says his death was preventable and staffers need to be held accountable. You can watch our full investigation and listen to internal affairs interviews with jail staff. It's all under the reveal section of our 11 Alive app. Just open the app and click on watch at the bottom of the screen. One fugitive captured, but the search continues for a second man. This is more than 24 hours after a shootout with Georgia deputies in North Georgia. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation tweeting this morning that one of the two fugitives, Jonathan Hosmer, is now in custody. But Dalton Potter, look at this guy, is still on the run. According to the GBI, Potter was pulled over for driving a stolen tra a trailer. Investigators say he fired several shots at a deputy. That deputy was not seriously hurt. And then Potter ended up escaping. He is considered to be armed and dangerous with a bad mug shot, too, if you see him called 911. Investigators working now in Barrow County to identify human remains found this morning. Major Ryan Sears with the Barrow County Sheriff's Office says the remains were found along Wages Road. That's near Tanglewood Road in Auburn, Georgia. Sears says so far nothing indicates foul play. Fulton County's uh, school district has now kicked off phase one of reopening classrooms today. Phase one gives pre-K through second grade the option of in-person learning for 90 minutes once a week. Students in some special needs programs have the same option, but for three hours. And third through 12th grade can schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings with teachers. Meanwhile, the district is debating skipping phase two and jumping to phase three, where all students have the option of attending in-person classes one full day a week. We'll let you know as soon as that decision is made. Early voting began today in Georgia's 5th Congressional District in the special election to fill the remainder of the late Congressman John Lewis's term. There are seven candidates on the ballot, Election Day, September 29th. Meanwhile, an investigation is underway into possible cases of double voting during primaries earlier this year. Georgia's Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger says his office is looking into claims that 1,000 people voted twice. Here is Joe Hankey to explain more. A double voter knows exactly what they are doing, diluting the votes of each and every voter that follows the law. Georgia's Secretary of State today said the double votes were cast in this summer's primary and runoff elections. Raffensperger says one voter bragged about voting twice, but did not describe how his office knows the other voters may have intentionally cast a ballot twice. The state absentee voting guide explains how voters can turn in their unused absentee ballot and vote in person, or if they mailed in an absentee ballot but the elections office has not received it, you may cancel the absentee ballot by making a written request to have the ballot marked canceled. The voter can then vote in person. Raffensperger says 150,000 voters requested an absentee ballot but later decided to instead vote in person, meaning a fraction cast both. The 1,000 people knew what they were doing. There's no excuse under the law for double voting. Raffensperger says despite safeguards, if an election worker fails to follow through and cancel an absentee ballot when someone votes in person, a double vote could be recorded. He says his office is now working with counties to stop future double votes, but the state Democratic Party is pushing back, saying voter fraud continues to be extremely rare in Georgia, and any implication otherwise undermines our elections. It is clear that rather than do his job of promoting the safety and security of our voting process, the Secretary of State is instead pushing the GOP's voting conspiracy theories and disinformation. Perspective and analysis, that's what our 11 Alive political team is working to bring you as we race toward the November election, eight weeks away. If there is a topic you'd like us to cover, email us at whereatlspeaks at 11alive.com. They say it's about creating generational wealth. Next, the big investment two women are making to help economic mobility in the African-American community. Dry weather conditions for yet another day today and another night, but things are changing. We've got some moisture building out actually coming in from the east and an easterly flow is going to tap into that and that's going to spread us some more clouds, humidity and even a rain chance. We'll break it down for you. Some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you 
First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. A unique approach to bring change after months of nationwide protests. Two women are making a big investment to create economic mobility in the African-American community. Natisha Lance shows us how. Around the country, voices of a growing movement could not be silenced after the deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery. It just kind of sparked something inside of us. Renee Walters was among the crowd shouting for change. Now she's turning her protest into investment. We've done the the Facebook activism, the protesting, the protesting everything. We, that's not working for us, so it's time for us to action, action, action. She teamed up with her friend Ashley and 17 other families to buy more than 96 acres near Toomsboro, Georgia. That's about two hours outside of Atlanta. This is our answer to breaking generational curses. Their inspiration was Black Wall Street, a self-sustaining black community in Tulsa, Oklahoma back in the 1920s. The friends wanted to create a place to build generational wealth that can be a safe haven for other black families. We're planning on recycling our black dollar between the 20, or excuse me, the 19 families that are a part of our organization. That's what really Black Wall Street was about, was about that local economy, that hyper-local economy. The group of families, now called the Georgia Freedom Initiative, have a lot of ideas for the land that used to be a lumber farm, but they plan to take their time to create the refuge and change they want to see. We can't wait for anyone to do anything for us, to come save us, it starts with us. The Brookings Institute reports the wealth of white families nearly 10 times greater than black families. The Georgia Freedom Initiative plans to start development in the next three to four months. They eventually want to change the name of the town to Freedom, Georgia. Cooler temperatures, an early sign of fall. Time to bust out those pumpkins. Maybe not yet. <laughs> not I'm, I'm, not yet. One, I'm not one of those guys. <laughs> but uh, Chris Holcomb is here with the seven day forecast. Uh, you know, you can see the shadows begin to look just a little bit different than maybe even two weeks ago. Exactly. Yeah. And in these temperatures, you know, we had the dry air this weekend. Temperatures were comfortable, still close to average, but at least it was at 90. So that felt a lot nicer. Now, though, more moisture is going to start moving in. We're going to be holding pretty much in the 80s for the rest of this week, but it's going to start to feel more muggy out there. And here's what's happening. We're dry now. We have this moisture coming in off of the Atlantic coastline through North Carolina, South Carolina, even on the Georgia coast. We have an easterly flow here. That's going to tap into some of that moisture and that's going to bring in the clouds first, low rain chances and the humidity levels are start are going to start coming up as well. In fact, check out our emoji cast. This is to uh, kind of give us an idea of how muggy it is out there tonight at 11 o'clock. We see the smiley face, which is indicating still a dry feel to the air, but the moisture is going to start building in. Look at Wednesday. 
We get to this uh oh emoji here feeling a little more humid really over many of our areas and you can see the green colors getting a little bit darker, especially coming in from the east where we see that flow that's moving our way Thursday still feeling pretty humid here and then look at this into Friday the frown which is very humid and that means not only just how muggy it is, but also with that amount of moisture in the atmosphere, we're going to see a better chance for some rain moving in as well. So Saturday frowns as well and even into Sunday as those rain chances are going to be higher as we go into the weekend with all that moisture that is going to be in place here uh, through the weekend. Temperatures right now feeling pretty good. 77 in Atlanta. We're in the upper 60s in Carrollton, lower 70s in Athens. Look at this. Even in Covington and Peachtree City right now on the south side, temperatures in the 60s, low 70s in Canton and Gainesville. Feeling pretty good uh, for a September night outside. Tomorrow, we're going to get up to around 87 for a high. After a morning low of 68 here in town, we're going to go with the 7 on the wasometer. The reason it's not any higher is because we'll see more clouds that'll start blocking out that sunshine. It's going to be a gradual increase in our cloud cover as well as a low rain chance in the afternoon and evening. Now let me show you what we're watching. Here's that easterly flow. All right, coming in from the north and east. Remember I showed you that moisture that's over along the coast of South Carolina and North Carolina. We'll watch with that easterly flow how it kind of taps in to some of that moisture. This is early in the morning. We'll see a few clouds around at lunchtime, a mixture of sunshine and clouds, a little bit of rain trying to come into East Georgia. Some of that moves our way. We're only going with a 20 to 30% chance for a shower hour for tomorrow afternoon into the evening hours and then going into Thursday, starting off with a better coverage of clouds. Same thing at noon on Thursday and then a better chance for some scattered showers that will develop here on Thursday as well with about a 30 to 40 percent chance for showers Thursday. Then it goes up to a 50 percent chance Friday, Saturday and even on Sunday as well. So here's that moisture here. We also have a little potential tropical disturbance that we're watching uh, that is off the coast of the Carolinas that has a 30 percent chance of developing over the next two days, 40% chance of developing over the next five days. We also have Paulette and Renee out there and then another potential system coming off the coast of Africa with a low risk the next two days, but then an 80% chance of development over the next five days. Now here's that system off the Carolina coastline, most likely coming in Thursday morning, could be a tropical depression, maybe a storm, but it's going to bring rain into the Carolina coastline and some of that is going to be moving into our area as well. Here's Paulette. Now let me show you where this is in the central Atlantic. All right, here's Puerto Rico, the Leeward Islands right there. This storm most likely maintaining tropical storm strength that starts to turn to the north and east and then eventually to the north. We think this is going to curve away from Bermuda and the uh, Atlantic coast. Here's Renee, most likely becoming a hurricane on Thursday and then that one curves away. Shouldn't have any impact on the Atlantic coastline as well. Seven day outlook showing highs near 87 tomorrow. Look at the rain chances though. They come up a little bit each day. 30% chance Wednesday, 40% chance Thursday, 50% chance for showers Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Then back down to 40% Monday and Tuesday with high temperatures each and every afternoon. They'll be holding in the 80s. Take a look at your weather wow moment. This is from Mary Beth Etheridge in Stockbridge. Beautiful colors there in that picture. This is sunrise this morning with that sunshine mixing in with a few of those morning clouds that we had around. Thank you, Mary Beth. She's one of our very active 11 Alive community storm trackers. You can be one too on Facebook. Just search 11 Alive storm trackers. Ask to become a member of this closed group. We'll let you in and you can be a part of this exclusive local weather community. All right, coming up after the break, why health experts say mammogram screenings are still as important now as they were prior to the pandemic. Sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. 
Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Side effect of the coronavirus pandemic, cancer screenings are down. They are way down, according to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. 35% of Americans have missed one during the pandemic, and that includes mammograms, which can help catch breast cancer early when it is more easily treated. Here's NBC's Sarah Dolloff with the story. As Americans catch up on missed appointments, from doctor's visits to the dentist to hair salons, Health experts are reminding women not to forget mammograms. Prioritize your self-care, prioritize your health care, and go ahead and reschedule your mammogram. A survey this summer by medical technology company Hologic found more than a quarter of women plan to either skip or delay their annual screenings this year. And the consequences could be serious. The National Cancer Institute estimates there could be 10,000 additional breast and colorectal deaths over the next decade as a result of missed screenings and delayed diagnoses and treatment. I've had many patients who've had an early um, breast cancer diagnosed with a routine uh, mammogram. I'm good. A routine mammogram caught musician Cheryl Crow's stage one breast cancer in 2006, screening she's glad she got. Would it have been stage two in six months? It's possible, in which case uh, my treatment would have been changed from a lumpectomy and radiation to perhaps chemotherapy or something more drastic. And with healthcare centers taking additional precautions against the spread of COVID-19, including masks, stepped up cleanings and spaced appointments to minimize contact between patients, the Grammy winner is encouraging women to reschedule missed mammograms or keep upcoming appointments. So until we have a cure, this is our greatest weapon. Aiming to catch breast cancer early and save lives. Some of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world are making a historic pledge, saying they will not rush out a COVID-19 vaccine without proper testing. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. 
continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear, on 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. This is a story that we have done repeatedly over the last decade, and we have done it about this time of year, right after Labor Day, that coyotes are really roaming around in metro Atlanta neighborhoods. I mean, you, you can pick it anywhere in Atlanta. For that matter, you can pick it anywhere in the country and you see this proliferation of coyotes that absolutely can be seen at night and oftentimes during the day as well. Tracy A. McPeer explains why the problem gets worse this time of year. High-pitched uh, squealing and, and uh, howling, so you, you definitely know it when you hear them. And Jamie Barden says you also know when you see them. These coyotes were caught on camera in his Sandy Springs yard near Nancy Creek. Actually hunting. Um, he's clearly looking for, for something. Coyote trapper Chip Elliott says these animals will eat just about anything. Insects, fruits, vegetables, live animals, dead animals, um, berries. And September to May is his busiest time of year because the litters from spring are old enough to hunt. So you get more sightings of them and you start losing more pets right now. Yvonne Wade says it happened to her neighbor in Buckhead. I heard her across the creek um, crying out one day and I found out it was because she had her cat killed uh, by a coyote and she found it. Elliot says they can't use cages to trap them because the coyotes are too smart. So they dig a hole and bury a chain connected to a foothold trap. Elliot says the footholds are not dangerous for humans or non-target animals. Non-target animals can just be released later without breaking any bones. And for humans, our feet are too large to get trapped in the first place. Elliot says he's trapped more than 20 coyotes in just a few weeks. And unfortunately, they have to euthanize them because they often carry diseases like parvo, rabies, and mange and can't be relocated. He says his goal is to decrease the coyote population while increasing their fear of humans, restoring a balance, at least for a while. They can coexist to some degree, but they are a predator and nobody wants their pets or children attacked. Yeah, they are, they are bad news for tips on ways to protect your pet, your dog, your cat, and your children as well. They're, they're not afraid of us anymore. I mean, this has really evolved here in the last decade or so. I know I, I see them in my yard, and uh, I know everybody else does, whether you live in town, midtown, or outside the perimeter. You can look for the story on 11alive.com or the 11 Alive app. A new wave of lawsuits against two medical sterilization plants in Metro Atlanta filed on behalf of residents who live nearby. The lawsuits allege the facilities have released a toxic gas that is directly linked to high cancer rates. 
in the neighboring communities. Reveal investigator Andy Parati explains. The attorneys say they represent nearly 200 people who lived or worked near the plants. Many of the attorneys and their clients still live within miles of the facility. Michael Joffroy is one of them. They're killing us. They are killing our community. Joffroy joined five other attorneys in a virtual press conference Tuesday announcing new litigation against two companies which use a cancer-causing gas to sterilize medical equipment, BD in Covington and Sterigenics near Smyrna. The lawsuits claim the company's use of ethylene oxide has contributed to a rise in cancer diagnoses in nearby communities. Kale Connolly is another attorney representing residents. And each of these persons have been, have been diagnosed with either lymphoma, leukemia, or breast cancer. And all of them were in otherwise good health and without significant genetic or other health conditions other than exposure to ETO prior to their cancer diagnosis. That includes Lisa Miller, a pediatrician who lives three and a half miles from the BD plant. She's currently battling breast cancer. Attorney Darren Penn represents her. The exposure that these uh, folks in Covington, uh, especially within a close proximity of, of the facility, uh, are, are undoubtedly experiencing, then I think it's, it's a very good connection. In 2018, the Environmental Protection Agency identified 109 areas in the U.S. showing potentially elevated cancer risk, most of the risk driven by ethylene oxide. That includes communities near the BD and sterogenics plants. Last year, BD spokesperson Troy Kirkpatrick provided 11 Alive a tour of its facility. Simply put, we wouldn't operate a facility that we thought put anyone at risk. Residents' attorneys didn't offer any specific evidence linking the gas to their client's cancer, but they say it will be revealed in the near future. If we wouldn't, didn't believe that and believe in our ability to do that with competent testimony and evidence, I wouldn't be talking to you today. BD and Sterigenics did not respond to our on-camera interview request, but BD did send us an email essentially saying that the ethylene oxide levels outside its plant is on par or lower than many other parts in the state, including a state park three hours away. We've reported extensively on this issue. If you watch our television stations at all, you know that, and you can find more about both the impact of ethylene oxide and the Georgia plants that use the chemicals on our website, 11alive.com. A major development now in the race to produce a vaccine for COVID. Some of the world's most well-known drug makers are pledging not to rush out a vaccine without proper testing. NBC Stephanie Gosk has the details. The race to develop a vaccine for COVID-19, now powered by an unprecedented joint pledge. This morning, the CEOs of nine pharmaceutical companies, including AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, and Pfizer, say they will commit to high ethical standards and sound scientific principles as they work toward developing a vaccine. The statement includes a pledge to always make the safety and well-being of vaccinated individuals our top priority and to only submit a vaccine for approval or emergency authorization after demonstrating safety and efficacy through a phase three clinical study that is designed and conducted to meet requirements of expert regulatory authorities. The hope that this pledge will ensure public confidence in the process and confidence could be faltering. A USA Today poll of voters found two thirds say they won't get a coronavirus vaccine as soon as it comes out. One in four say they don't want to ever get it. While in a controversial move last week, the CDC asked states to prepare for a large-scale distribution of a coronavirus vaccine by November 1st, two days before the election. Part of what the administration has dubbed Operation Warp Speed to make sure a vaccine is approved and reaches as many people as quickly as possible. The president has repeatedly suggested a vaccine could be ready by this fall. This could have taken two or three years, and instead it's going to be... <laughs> It's going to be done in a very short period of time. Could even have it during the month of October. Others have tempered those expectations. Dr. Anthony Fauci predicting approval would come by the end of the year. Is it possible that it could be before then? And the answer is yes. I think it's unlikely, but I think it's possible. 
There are currently nine phase three trials underway, three of them here in the United States. Thousands of people have volunteered. Some get the placebo, some get the vaccine. The FDA says for a vaccine to be proven effective, at least 50% of the people who receive it have to be protected. New data from NBC survey Monkey weekly tracking poll shows the coronavirus fatigue is setting in for the country. No kidding. According to the data, American adults still view the pandemic as predominantly a health crisis. 52% say it's more of a health crisis. 47% say it's more of an economic crisis. 54% of adults say it's a bigger concern that businesses are reopening too quickly compared to 42% are more worried about them opening too slowly. There is grant money available for people who need help because of the pandemic, but you ought to be careful who you apply for. Someone sent our Verify team a social media post claiming that FEMA is mailing checks. Cheryl Mercedes verifies. The Facebook post claims if you've worked any during the COVID-19 pandemic, FEMA has finally authorized a one-time $2,800 check for hazard pay. It includes FEMA's logo with a link to apply. This one post has been shared over 8,000 times. Cheryl asked the Verify team to look into it. Our source for this is the Federal Emergency Management Agency. FEMA executed the Lost Wages Program in August, providing billions of dollars to states to help with their unemployment claims. The funding allows states to provide at least an extra $300 per week to people who lost their jobs because of COVID-19. But as far as relief money for people who continue to work during the pandemic, FEMA states on its website, no federal assistance was given in the form of hazard pay, nor has FEMA directly paid individuals. So we can verify this claim is false. FEMA has added a coronavirus rumor control section to its website to address these kinds of claims. By the way, it's always a good idea to check with the agency offering the grant opportunity before you fill out any kind of application that asks for your personal information. Wildfires continue to grow stronger in California. The Creek Fire in Northern California is spanning more than 140,000 acres now. Crews have not been able to contain it, leaving about 5,300 homes in danger of catching fire. The fire has already destroyed 65 structures. Dozens of people were trapped in the Sierra National Forest. Army National Guard helicopters have been evacuating people from the area, but a lack of visibility has made all of this very, very awful. Seattle police arrested 22 protesters Monday after a group marched to the police union building. According to police, the crowd was blocking traffic as they marched. Police also arrested a number of people that they called rioters who refused to leave after throwing rocks, bottles, coronas, stuff in it. And authorities say that no officers were hurt. With Labor Day behind us, we're entering the final stretch of the presidential campaign. President Trump visiting toss-up states, Florida and North Carolina, as Joe Biden still leading in the polls and in ad spending. Here's Alice Barr of NBC in Washington with the very latest. With exactly eight weeks to go until Election Day, President Trump is hitting the campaign trail hard today, traveling to two battleground states, Florida and North Carolina. And with Joe Biden's campaign now spending more on ads, the president saying he would put his own money into his campaign if needed. We needed to spend more money up front because of the pandemic and the statements being made by Democrats, which were, again, disinformation. In a barrage of tweets today, President Trump slamming Biden and the Democrats, the rivals trading barbs over the president's statements on having a coronavirus vaccine ready before Election Day. Biden saying we need a vaccine as soon as possible, but bulking when asked if he would take one tomorrow if the president announced it. Well, I'm full transparency on the vaccine. One of the problems is the way he's playing with policy. He said so many things that aren't true. President Trump, often criticized for ignoring the advice of his own medical officials, now accusing Biden and running mate Kamala Harris of undermining science. Should immediately apologize for the reckless anti-vaccine rhetoric. Today, nine major pharmaceutical companies promising to keep politics out of their approval process. We will only submit for authorization when we have evidence of safety and efficacy. 
The CEO of Pfizer says we could have answers before Election Day, but experts caution it could still take months to deliver the vaccine to hundreds of millions of Americans. Cloth masks can make it difficult for people who are hearing impaired to read lips. One girl is taking action to help others like her. And we are keeping a close eye on the tropics right now as things are really heating up. We're just two days away from the statistical peak of hurricane season. We'll give you an update as we await the latest 11 p.m. advisories coming in on Paulette and Renee. Georgia Tech, days away from kicking off its season. What are the expectations this year? We'll hear from the Yellow Jackets head coach coming up next. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, there are unintended consequences to needed measures to slow the spread of COVID. A girl who's hearing impaired relies on reading lips. She could not see what people were saying through the cloth mask, and she raised $2,000 for see-through masks for healthcare workers. Tonight, Boyd Hoopert with our sister station, KARE in Minneapolis, introduces us to Lainey. Right now I'm braiding them. Her hands move quickly, but by now they should. A lot. I have made. Lainey Broad is prolific with bracelets 
and problem solving. So it has drastically impacted some of our patients. Leah Teagum is Laney's audiologist at Children's Minnesota, where masks are now mandatory upstairs in the audiology clinic, which presents a problem. So much of our communication is nonverbal, where we rely on facial expressions, and for individuals who have hard of, or who are hard of hearing, we rely on lip reading as well. Look something like Laney became aware this. of a solution. So cover up your nose, yet you can see your mouth through it, so then you can lip read. Then she put those fast fingers to work. Well, she was already making bracelets and we had the thread, so we thought, let's try to, to see if people will buy them and a lot of people bought them. <laughs> all my orders. Braiding alone. Somebody wanted eight rainbows. And with friends. These are all the done bracelets. Laney has completed and sold roughly 200 bracelets. Thank you for your support to help hearing impaired kids like me communicate. Enough bracelets to buy 270 clear masks. It feels really good. As did this. Delivery day at Children's Minnesota. Would you like to sign your check? For Laney's donation of $2,056. Pandemic, she's an 11-year-old girl and she's finding a way to positively influence people. Awesome. Masks for reading lips. Cool. And sharing smiles. There we go. These efforts are happening here in Metro Atlanta as well. The masks are also a challenge for children on the spectrum. Many individuals with autism rely on visual cues like a smile or a frown as their means to communicate. SMAH Atlanta, SMA Atlanta, a nonprofit made and donated clear masks for the Marcus Autism Center and Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. Chris? Well, we're keeping an eye on the tropics as Thursday is the statistical peak of hurricane season. Uh, typically, that's September 10th. That's the peak of the season and we've got a lot going on out in the tropics and one is nearing the North Carolina coastline right now. It's not a tropical system, but it has the potential to become a depression or maybe even a tropical storm. 30% chance of that over the next two days, 40% chance of that over the next five days. Don't get caught up on whether or not it's going to be a depression or a named storm because no matter what, it is going to be moving in, we think, near the South Carolina and North Carolina coast, and it's going to start spreading in more rain and more moisture. So just know it will be bringing rain in along the Atlantic coastline. There's another system we're watching here that has a potential system coming off the coast of Africa. It has a tw only a 20% chance of development over the next two days, but an 80% chance over the next five days. Now, these storms are also uh, after what's going on right now with Paulette and Renee. Here's the one off the North Carolina coastline, and this is just kind of showing us the trajectory of where we think the center of the low pressure would go. Most of the consensus of the spaghetti model plots bring this into the North Carolina coast. A couple of outliers bring it down to South Carolina, but again, it is going to be bringing rain in uh, into parts of the southeast, including enhancing our rain chances as well. Now, Paulette is out in the central Atlantic right now. Well, this is a tropical storm and as you can see here there's Puerto Rico there's the Leeward Islands this storm most likely staying just shy of hurricane strength turning to the north and east and then here's Bermuda that little speck you see right there on the map is the uh, island of Bermuda it's going to be getting close to Bermuda and then some of our extended models actually show it curving away and most likely not coming to the United States but we need to monitor it though as you know things can change but based on what we're seeing right now we're not overly concerned and then Renee looks like it is going to become a hurricane category one storm on Thursday, but it starts to curve away as well and most likely is going to stay out to sea and not have any major impact on it. So here's the spaghetti models on both of these. Here's Renee. You can see that curve away, but then this one is Paulette. We need to watch it again. There's Bermuda right there. The models, most of them show it curving away and moving away from the Atlantic coastline. We'll have to watch Bermuda. A couple of outliers, though, show it trying to move more to the north and east. So that's why we will continue monitoring it and keeping a close eye on it. But again, not overly concerned about what's going to happen with it now. Here's a look at all the names. We are uh, still on Paulette and Renee. Those are active storms right now. Next would be Sally, then Teddy, then Vicki and Wilfred. We only have four more names to go. And we're not even to the peak of hurricane season yet. If we run out of names and we have a name storm after Wilfred, then we will go to the Greek alphabet, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. It'll keep going on like that. Now, here's the tropical timeline. You can see here we are in September. The statistical peak is on the 10th. It normally starts the first day of June and then goes to the end of November. November 30th is the end of the season. So we've been seeing the activity ramping up. We peak 
and then we start to see the activity coming back down just based on trends that we've been dealing with. Uh, so we've got to get through this week of this uh, all this activity and then hopefully things it's going to be a slow process will die down. We still have some really strong storms possible in September and in October. Historically we've had some of those around. 87 degrees for a high on Wednesday with a 30% chance for showers here, 40% chance Thursday. Higher rain chances Friday, Saturday and Sunday. We got spoiled last weekend with all that dry weather. This weekend, our rain chances are going to be higher. Then we're back to 40% Monday and Tuesday with highs this week, pretty much holding in the 80s. The Braves have placed their ace, Max Freed, on the 10-day injured list because he has back spasms. This move is retroactive to Sunday, and Sunday start his velocity was way down, and he allowed three runs in five innings of work. The Braves general manager says that he is extremely confident that it will only be a short stint on the injured reserve, the injured list right now. So uh, hopefully he will be back soon. Rookie Kyle Wright got the start tonight, and just when he thought the bad luck and bad performances from Brave starters couldn't get any worse, Wright gives up five runs, three homers in four innings. Ugh. The ERA for the Braves collective starters now 5.62, the worst in the National League and among the worst in all of Major League Baseball. The Marlins got the win six to nothing. Georgia Tech kicks off the 2020 season Saturday at Florida State. Tech picked to finish last in the ACC. They look to be in the wine cellar. That's one way to look at it. They're be, yeah, monitoring the wines. Uh, not a lot of expectations for this Yellow Jackets team, but they want to show that they have improved from the last time that we saw them on the field. We got better and better throughout the entire season last year and six, six practices through spring ball. And then all this time we've had with OTAs uh, and an expanded training camp. Uh, just excited to see them go out and play. But the biggest thing is a team that plays together, plays really, really hard, uh, fights for each other and uh, plays at a really high level. That's the expectation every day. Some schools will have to wait a little bit longer to get started. UGA still has a couple of weeks to go. The dogs don't open the 2020 season until September 26th against Arkansas, and they are ready to get going. We were ready to play August 31st, so, um, you know, we're going to keep practicing getting better. Uh, but, you know, September 26th, coming, you know, best believe Joe's going to be a good place for football. We're two days away from the first NFL game of the season. The league says one player and seven staff members tested positive for COVID-19 in its latest round of testing. More than 2,600 players were tested between August 30th and September 5th. That's a, a 0 0.09 positive rate across the league for that testing period. Japan's Minister of the Olympics says the rescheduled games must be held at any cost. Organizers are looking at more than 200 proposals on how best to deal with the virus, including easing travel restrictions for athletes, antivirus measures at the athletes' village, and how to handle spectators. You got a feel for Japan and Tokyo, all of the preparation, all of the billions of dollars, and they still don't really know what's going down. All right, that's a look at sports. We will be back right after this. Coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Prime Time, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1105 News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. After some beautiful dry days and a long holiday weekend, the moisture's coming back. That means clouds will increase, the humidity levels return, and the rain chances come back too. 30% chance for showers Wednesday, 40% chance Thursday, 50% chance Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with highs in the 80s. And then rain chances come down a little bit, but still 40% chances for Monday and also on Tuesday. So get used to a soggier pattern moving in. Unfortunately, it's gonna be soggy for the weekend. Stay with us, flip over to 11 Alive for Up Late. As biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1105 News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.